Hello? Hey, this is Lynn, and she's calling because she wants her style back. We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time. One, two, three, fuck it. My darling, I love you, 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 the most ironic thing about this outfit is that I literally have nowhere to be. Even if we weren't social distancing, no one's inviting me to their parties. But if I did have formal events to go to, this is something that I would don. I really love mixing vintage pieces with modern pieces. Vintage velvet skirt has a dramatic flair, while the wraparound shirt on top is a little bit more youthful. Especially when you have the little lace of the camisole peeking through. And that's how we get fancy, bitch. <laughs> I myself would actually never call myself an art hoe. I feel like art hoes only exist on the internet. But as someone who loves painting and drawing and doing all those artsy artsy things, this is the outfit that exemplifies that aesthetic. We have some bright colors and some mismatched patterns. And I did my hair up in half a pigtail, which is so much cuter than I anticipated. Here's me trying to look sexy with a paintbrush and uh, failing. All together for me, what I'm wearing can inspire what I'm going to create or go out to do in the day. So wearing an outfit that I feel confident in, but will also get those creative juices a juicin and a runnin. <laughs> You're an influencer. <laughs> I think everyone who's a Gen Z or a millennial has put on an outfit just to take an Instagram picture. As much stress and anxiousness and just toxicity that can come from social media, I personally have been challenged to go and try out new things that I normally would not wear or do. I follow a lot of photographers and fashion stylists that wear pieces that just blow my mind. And wearing this poofy Cinderella-esque sheer button-up top is kind of the step outside the comfort zone that I want to take not only when I'm creating Instagram or YouTube content, but also when I'm developing my own style. Bring me all of your dreams, you dreamers. Bring me all of your heart melodies that I may wrap them in a blue cloud cloth away from the two rough fingers of the world. probably tell by now this outfit is called indecisive bitch because I could not decide between the white corduroys and a black corduroys so I did both. This resonates with my personality so much because I am a very opinionated person but sometimes when it comes to decision making it's a hard battle. One of the most difficult choices I had to make is choosing what I want to pursue in life but if you really want to make an impact or be successful or even be happy spreading yourself too thin and chasing too many dreams can end up with you not accomplishing any dreams at all. Like, those dreams will stay as dreams. They'll never become reality. As you can tell, I like wearing funky, unorthodox things because I'm quirky. And let's pretend that the hydro flask that I definitely wasn't using as a tripod is definitely not in the frame right now. <laughs> this outfit radiates confidence because it's not something you would normally see on a human being. This is the kind of outfit that I feel like a grandma who gives no shits would wear in New York City while carrying her shih tzu in her purse. I don't have a shih tzu, so um, here's baby Pusheen. <laughs> I want to be able to wear what I want to wear without my freaking conscience telling me, oh my gosh, what will people think? And I'm learning that lesson slowly. <laughs> 
This could also be alternatively called Timothy Chalamet in a Victorian era movie that is directed by Greta Gerdwig. This monochromatic outfit is everything. The freaking pants with their freaking big ass pockets. The shirt with the ruffle details. Mm. I feel like a pastry you would find in a fancy French patisserie because I'm a whole ass snack, y'all. If I were a full time musician, this is the kind of shit I would wear performing. I can just see myself smashing some guitars in this, yo. Important was that this time that when I did that, we were speaking about that nothing is really corny if you can find a way to do it. For a lot of high school, I had to dress professionally for speech and debate tournaments. And there's a fine line between looking your professional best and then just looking like a, a hot mess. <laughs> I always like dressing to my personality because it says a lot about a competitor. It makes you look like you got your shit together and that you can be taken seriously. There's just a classiness to this outfit that makes me want to wear a blazer every day so I can have those strong woman shoulders. More power to you, you know? If these were low-rise jeans, I feel like it's something that Lorelai Gilmore could wear. Autumn is my favorite season, and it's the one time of the year that I embrace wearing muted taupe tones instead of bright, flashy colors. One of the best things about living in a place that actually has cold weather is that I get to layer things. It allows you to mix and match textures and patterns, all while making sure that your body is not getting frostbite. Here's our backdrop, and here is my room, there's my mattress, here is my filming area, and I literally deconstructed my entire room for this, so. My changing room, if you go behind the bed sheet, is on the rack that's holding up the background. Here is my lovely makeup, um, hair and makeup right here, done by me. Videography, also done by me. Lighting and setup, done by me. And nature fits styled by me. Woo woo.